Hi, I'm Buddy Lona, also known as the Creative Globe Pop. I'm traveling the world since 2014 and this time I go back to my roots, Indonesia, my country of birth. An encounter with Asian cultures and temples, local wildlife, different cities and local folklore. In this episode I'm telling you about how to travel Sumatra, so let's step into it. We left the Netherlands from Schiphol Airport and flew with KLM all the way to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. There we had a transfer to Kuala Manu, Medan Airport. We've been picked up by Mr. Ballas. Yes, THE Mr. Ballas. Because I travel so many countries and this is by far one of the best guides I ever had. Medan is just like any other city in Southeast Asia, packed with people, traffic and scooters. So many scooters. Mopeds, it's moped mayhem every single day. Anyway, because we were here for one day, we had limited time to see some highlights. We saw only the Masjid Raya al Masun Mosque, is also known as the Great Mosque. Maimun Palace, also known as the Sultan's Palace. Different churches like this special Catholic church and colorful Hindu temples. After one day, we left Medan to book Bukit Lawang, around a four hour trip by bus. During the four hour trip, we see a lot of palm oil plantations. We've seen local workers cutting the palm oil nuts from the trees. Those nuts are collected by the local workers and transported to the palm oil factory nearby. The reason it takes 4 hours, it is because of the bad condition of the roads. Sumatra Highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, yeah. yeah. Sumatra Highway. Sumatra Highway. <laughs> but after a long time, but it's worth it. Especially when you see Bukit Lawang. Bukit Lawang is famous of the Gunung Loise National Park, where you can see the two kings of the jungle, the Uang Utan. Of course, there's doing a trekking a lot more to see. Different vegetations, birds and more monkeys. Long tail macaque, baboons and weapon plantations maintained by the local people. After a few days we hit the road again and traveled all the way back to Medan and then to Beristagi. That area is famous of two volcanoes, Mount Sibayak and Mount Sinabung. Especially Sinabung volcano is still active. The last eruption was in 2012. Two weeks later, when I left Sumatra, there was again an eruption, so consider us lucky. In the surroundings of Beristagi, you have a good sight on the countryside and the local farmers building crops such as rice, sugar and corn. Or you can just visit the local market, coffee bean plantations, more rice, or people are harvesting rice, a Buddhist temple. And near Mount Sibayak there are the hot pools. Spending two days in Beristagi, we traveled to the Lake Toba via Parapat. From there, we took a ferry to Samasi Island. The ride takes roughly 4 hours, but you have a tremendous view high in the mountains on Lake Toba. The 
ferry from Parapa to Tuk Tuk is just good for a change. You stretch your legs, if you have time, you can visit shores of Parapa and visit the small shops. The ferry goes every hour. The ferry from Tuk Tuk to Parapa or from Parapa to Tuk Tuk that includes go aboard and disembark, it roughly takes 16 minutes. We decided to stay for three nights on Samosir Island. During our stay we did several trips, such as traveling from Tuk Tuk to Pangurarang and back. It is also possible doing a boat trip around the island, it takes one day to travel around. But it was a raining season, so we took rather the bus than the boat. On Samosir Island there is a lot to see, like wildlife, dozens of buffaloes, local people and kids going to school, batak houses and the graves. Talking about Batak, near Tuk Tuk there is a traditional Batak dance. The traditional and unique dance is especially from that region. The dance is for telling stories, being in good favor of the gods, for a prosperous life and crops. <laughs> Also, we went into a local funeral and it was a traditional Batak style also. What I noticed is that people from Sumatra celebrate life when somebody passed away. An interesting cultural thing while people in Europe are mourning and there's a lot of sadness. <laughs> dance, eat and drink. Talking about drinking, I had the privilege to try the most expensive coffee. I do it in English because of my international viewers. Um, this is the most expensive coffee in the entire world, also called, called Kopi Luang. I hope I pronounce it well, but um, it's uh, a coffee from a cat. It will pee out, so it will pee, not pee, poop out, so it's uh, the bee, they eat it, so they wash it and they make coffee yeah. So I'm gonna try this for the first time in my life. I smell it. Smell like normal coffee. A lot of taste. It's strong also. Hmm, sounds convincing buddy. On second thought, it was a bit disappointing because I was expecting too much of this coffee. But anyway, it was still good. It was time to leave Samosir Island and travel all the way via Parapat, Pamati Sangsianta, back to Medan. On Kuala Namu, Medan Airport, it was time to say Mr. Balas goodbye. Hi guys, we are at the airport of Kuala Namu, of Medan Airport. We are now unpacking the load here. You see that? Huh? And uh, I want to tell you one thing. What? This is Mr. Balas. He he take us to, uh, to a great trip to Sumatra and uh, he did a lot of show us a lot of things on Lake Tabo, Lake Tabo and whatever that, that's him so if you want to go to Sumatra sometime you pick him because we, I can definitely come back for him because it was an amazing time and we, we can show us much more things like uh, outdoor jeep safari uh, rafting so yeah. Call him, okay? Yeah. Okay, bye bye. bye. And again, Mr. Ballas was by far the best guard ever. Show all the credits to him and call or email him if you need him if you visit Sumatra. After Sumatra, we travel to Java. But that is coming up next. Thank you for watching. Any comments or if you want to contact me, post below or go to my website, thecreativeglobetrotter.nl.